All right, dudes, we're back. Thanks for watching that break. So, yeah, like I said, it's a little bit longer than normal, but we are almost good to go. Just waiting on players to drop us the vetoes. Then we can get into the games. Uh, it's the very last cast of the day, the very last best of three coming up. So whether it's a 2-0, 2-1, either way, uh, it'll be all wrapped up and finished after that. The conclusion to the 2v2 tournament, though, happens at the end of the month. So uh, there's actually this kind of awkwardly... Shut up, Starcraft, if you're loud. Um, there's this kind of awkward gap in time. We had, we had actually spaced these groups out a little bit more and a little better, but with... Man, what, you got, like, so many big events coming up, right? You got DreamHack Leipzig, you got um, I Am Pyeongchang, then there's uh, I Am Katowice, early February. Like, there's just so many big things going on. Player travel is something you have to accommodate for when you're planning these events. So, the 2v2 Grand Finals, at the moment... Hopefully won't change, but at the moment is scheduled for Wednesday the 31st. So, gonna be basically half a month before we get to actually finish up this tournament. But, I'm looking forward to it because it means everyone's gonna be finished up with Leipzig. It's a little too soon for everyone to have to fly out for Pyeongchang. It's that sweet spot to host those finals. Yep. Uh, yeah, actually look at the schedule here. Yeah. It's a little bit light at the moment, but... Uh, I will say that I've at least updated the calendar on Twitch, so it's up to date now. I know not a lot of you use our Google Document calendar, and that's totally cool and fine. But the events tab here on Twitch, which is above the screen, if you guys are on PC, uh, has everything for the next 20-ish days, and it's going to go even further as we have BTSL updated on there. And I guess I used Wardy's thing as an announcement because it's kind of assumed, but I guess we should just mention too, this is like the official announcement. Zombie will be casting BTSL. And uh, I'll throw up Maynard in there too. So it'd be myself, Maynard, Zombie Grub, and Wardy. Just kind of rotating around for BTSL as it comes up. I'm talking a lot about it because I just want to make sure everyone knows about it. Um, I find when we do these announcements, they get very little hype and very little views. So the more I mention in these casts, <clears throat> the more I just want you guys to be aware of what's coming. Because it's going to be the big focus of the channel from February all the way to April. Yeah. Oh, you're missing one person. Yo, 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 Rowles S. Duke, you messed up in chat. He said, Zombie Grub, I love the Liara statue in the back. You're supposed to ask, is that a Liara statue in the back? Because <laughs> everyone asks. Yeah, what everyone that is. asks. And yeah, they don't, they don't assume to know that it's Liara. Yeah, you're not supposed to use your eyes and know what it is, man. What's wrong with you? I mean, I, I think it's like the only thing it could be is Liara, but. You know, maybe if I've never played Mass Effect, I see something weird. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab these guys' team names. It looks like they're mostly ready. <clears throat> Optus, you throw them all to change theirs. Yeah, Gear and Gore. I'm not sure what's up with that. Uh, but they want to mm -hmm. be Gear and Gore. And then Harstam, of course, is wrapping Amazing Gaming. All right, whatever floats their boat. Flooded City gonna be the first game of this best of three grand grand finals. <coughs> I should replay Mass Effect. I have not. I I replayed it a year ago, I think, at this point, and then I got like eighty percent done, and I got really sad thinking about finishing it. You, know, I <laughs> actually, I get super itchy nostalgia, not for Mass Effect so much because it's a great game, but the multiplayer was a lot of fun, and I'll play it for two rounds and be like, ah, this sucks, and then six months will go by, and I'm like, you know what, I really miss the Mass Effect multiplayer. I played for a few games, but this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say, though, I'm really sad I never finished Andromeda. I don't think I even got halfway through. I really wish I did. Yeah. yeah. I I probably would have finished it if they didn't update it, which is such a weird thing to say. People wanted the updates. It was a bad game for multiple reasons before the updates, but... I just well, I wanted to wait till all of them were done, and, well, they're going to stop supporting it, so they'll be all done soon enough. Folks, it's the final best of three here for the 2v2 Aerial Cup. This is, of course, sponsored by Brian. Give him some love if you see him. His name is Carefree Rogue in chat. I don't believe he's here today, but hopefully you'll see him there for the finals. To the top side of the map, we have the combination of Hearthstone and a laser making up Amazing Gaming. Team Amazing Gaming. In the bottom, it is the Orange Terran Optimus and the Teal Terran. No, that's Protoss. Teal Protoss, you thermal. Whoa. Yeah, they're team gear and gore, apparently. I'm gonna assume it's something in Dutch I'm being tricked into saying. Maybe. 
I can't remember which one was gear. <laughs> which one was gore. I think I think Euthermo was gear. Ah. Anyways, uh, the Protoss element that I bring up is certainly interesting to see. This is a really bold move to make because even if, like, everyone keeps talking in chat today. Oh, Euthermo's like 6.5 game MMR Protoss, all this other stuff. It doesn't matter necessarily. Like, I really don't know that Euthermo could take on Harstam in a direct PvP. I don't know that he could be the laser in a PvZ. Maybe he can. I'm totally wrong, guys. But what I'm saying is it's two very talented main race players. To go off race like this, I hope they've got some special tactics up their sleeve. Because if they're hoping that just cheesy shenanigans that we tried to see with carriers and no Templar, no support, I don't think that's going to stand a chance against Harstam in a laser. Yeah, I agree. I'm, I'm really concerned, you know, Harst, uh, the thermal swapping races against, uh, well, how to how put this, like, politely, against anyone else, I guess I'll say is the best way to put it. Um, yeah, okay, especially if he has a special tactic in mind for 2v2, but Harstam and Laser are winning their games a lot based off of just solid 1v1 with a partner games. Yeah, <laughs> 1v1 with a little assistance. Yeah, no, no cannon shenanigans. They're getting cannoned, <laughs> but they're not doing the cannon shenanigans or anything. A couple I of adepts coming mean... to bother a laser. I don't think you meant to say cannanigans. Cannanigans. <laughs> Good one. Yeah, the adepts aren't anything too problematic. Queens and as well as back of a stalker, this is easy to clean up. So pushes that off, gets a little bit of a cancel. Nothing too major, just a little annoying. Hmm. Uh, Harston, of course, went Stargate before, so it's worth noting that he's not done it this game, but instead going for a Robo. I like the Observer. In fact, I like Observers coming out quick in a 2v2. Actually, on that note, it's made me realize <coughs> nobody's done anything truly dastardly cheesy. No Dark Templar, no gross things like that. We barely had one Widowmite drop this whole tournament, <laughs> much less just the games today. Mm-hmm. Oh, Euthermal is going to try and go for those mass Phoenix. This is where Harstam oh. had trouble uh, in one of the series, not the last one, but the one before that. Oh. Oh. Phoenix are perhaps not going to be super useful. Maybe, uh, maybe oh, not. I mean, oh, this is so sick. The Observer is going to get the vision for it. Yes, that is Harstam's Observer. That was kind of hard to tell at first, but... Absolutely correct. This is not something they will be expecting, and the Phoenix Count will not be high enough to really help, although it will be able to pick up the, the Queen. Maybe they can't chance Fuse. Ah, but this is so sick. On top of this, Harstam's going to be bringing his Stalkers up. Sure, they don't have Blink, but the Elevator from the Observer, or from the War Prism, is going to help, so both players are going to have all their units right here. It's... <laughs> Somebody is really weird all in, but Cyclists are locked out of the Warp Prism. I don't know if they're going to get it. No, they're definitely not going to get it. Nidus no. pops out, too. Oh, this is downright dirty. Yeah, only two Phoenix can't even pick up all of the Queens, so no point in trying to target the Nidus room, I don't think. Pick up two, one other one is maybe going to die. Actually, that turn doesn't go off at all. Yo, Harson could have freed those Queens too. Uh, he ends up just kiting around. This ends up flopping a little bit for our top team. Yeah, this ends up being very awkward. The Cyclones lock on again, but with one dying is not the opportunity to kill the Warp Prism. Void Ray um, loses, uses its overcharge and loses it. New uh, new Nidus from going to finish up here in just a sec. That War Prism is still not dead. Brings the new Stalkers to the high ground. Gives Harstam a lot more reinforcements to work with. Nidus from dies, but the Warping comes in from Harstam once again. And these Void Rays, they're out of their prismatic alignment. They can't they can't overcharge again for a few moments. Yeah. Uh, this is uh, one gets it sniped. There's so many Stalkers now. They've got Queens to help out and this might just work even after the initial attack kind of flopped this is really cool I, I like um, the execution out of Harsim and a laser for this but it's messy to say the least but even if Optimus you throw a recover the worker count is in the gutter man yeah. I don't think they are going to recover <laughs> this game is looking like it's over so much for the lack of aggression <clears throat> it's two base <laughs> one base and two base uh, aggression really worked out I think I think you throw out the right ideas. Like Phoenix would do really well, complimented by his teammate. If this wasn't a big all-in, but oh man, Manor Hatchery coming down. That is the oh. ultimate get out. They're spraying all over the ground too, man. What is the spray? Whoa. Okay, it looks like a Christmas ornament. No, it looks is like the lion. Look like? You know the lion before movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which in my mind is still like a Christmas ornament too. I wonder which Hell one they're yeah. going for. Probably the probably yours. 
Well, oh. we never get to see sprays, so was, you know, we wouldn't know what they all look like. Yeah, I love that we're seeing spray action at all. But uh, gear and gore are more like beer and boar. I don't know. They're dead. Mm, they're dead and dead. Yeah, there you go. Oh, but they are. They are maybe a little uh, salty about <laughs> the hatchery. Evil chambers. Oh no, dead, 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 dead. Yeah, just got to float and fly in. Um. Right, there we go. GG out of his ally at least. Harst him in a laser. Save us from some awkward delayed end of that game. And uh, yeah, that's going to be a nice 1 0 for these guys. Tough spot for you, Thermon Optimus. They got one life to fall back on, and this is it. Because there's no more matches after this. And it's it, it really it's the difference of money. Like, and that's a pretty big deal when it comes to these tournaments. Sure, 2v2 is fun. It's a little bit different. They don't have to. They can take a more relaxed approach to it, but uh, you don't want to play a whole day of games to walk away with nothing, and that's where this is heading right now. Yeah, it is. This is a, one of our normal days, too, so it's actually a good chunk of time, and they're close to not having anything for it. Uh, I'm just pulling out the payouts real quick. So yeah, third and fourth place in the tournament, guys, $131. That's, of course, <laughs> going to be split between two people. Second place in the tournament is worth 210, and first place is almost worth 500. It's at 473 dollars. So, a lot of money uh, to split for this. For it's, it's a tournament that spans a month, but really it's like a three-day tournament. I guess four if you count the qualifiers. Anyways, yeah. uh. Shrines of the Zool. This is that map that splits everyone up in the corners, so it's a real gang upable map. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's where to put it. Wrong GM is in the wrong slot. There we go. Their old team name was the Meme Skateers, apparently. Okay, good to know. Thank you, Dares. Man, I know we're talking about like Mass Effect and Dragon Age and all these other games in chat right now. Um. Can I get a one if you guys ever played Fantasy Star Online? I just started downloading Fantasy Star Online 2. I heard the game's garbage and it's terrible, especially with the English port. But I'm like, you know what? I never played it. I have such fond memories of Fantasy Star Online. So it's like 50 gigs. I haven't even finished downloading it yet. <laughs> just wait 10 hours. Leave your computer on. Just want to kill me some rag rappies, man. I don't know what those are. They're uh, basically more annoying versions of chocobos. Oh, yeah, you're not really supposed to attack chocobos. Actually, I'll say they're uglier, not cute, super annoying versions of chocobos. So what do they have in common with chocobos? Do they look like chickens? <laughs> the yellow birds. <laughs> okay, gotcha. All right, then. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, loading into the game. Let's rock and roll, folks. Yeah, hopefully it's not, but it could be the last game of the day. Spawning here to the top side. They are up one in the series. It's Harstum and a laser. On the bottom side, we have the orange Terran, Optimus. And back to Terran, it is Euthermal. I like going back to Terran. I think that it is... I think the off race thing is fine and it's fun, but to play against Hearthstone with it, that is silly. That is beyond risky. Yeah, I agree. Um, but let's see what happens on Shrines of Azul being the most aggressive map that's in the map pool of this tournament. Optimus and Euthermal tried doing a double two racks against another pair of opponents before, but got got basically. Like their opponents did a better aggressive opener than they did. And the same thing happened here. A laser is going for a pool first. I think anything else is is way too silly, but nicely. And Harstum, I would expect, would go for a double gateway opener. At least he's starting off with a double double gas. Yeah, I, I I agree. Like especially on this map, to go for an expansion is suicidal. Yeah, and there is the second barracks for both Terrans. Well, Overlord just kind of getting a nice scout. Not really a lot more we can do. Unfortunately, it, while it does reveal both the barracks, it doesn't help him defend against this any better. 
Yeah. Uh, I really like how Harsim and Laser are setting up, though. So, like, the Roachworn maybe is a little unnecessary, but then that'll give them powerful units to counter with. Uh, you leave three at home, you attack with three, that's still pretty powerful. And then uh, Harsim, you know, obviously not going to wall, there's no Zerg here. He's just trying to make it so Reapers can't dodge around as easily. Well, it's to hit those stalkers at least have some units to fight with. Unfortunately, though, uh, this might be one of those times the depths may have been the better selection. Hmm, yeah, we'll see. What's really nice about the setup, though, is that while Zerg, as mentioned in the last series these guys played, the Zerg player was the one that was bullied, no bully please, because the hatch came down, and the other player, the other teammate, has to be the one that kind of, like, either helps or lets their, their partner die. In, in this case, with how they built, they both have an equal shot of holding without each other's help. Well, with well, the roaches out, this has been a good deflection. It's been a great deflection, actually. The stalkers not getting on top of this. I said the deaths may have been better, but stalkers are a lot more maneuverable. I know mm -hmm. it's a bit counter to say because of the shades, but just their speed innately is quite good for this. Yeah, the range, really. Very good. Uh, we do have a triple rax for both. Yeah, there's a third reaper for both, but then New Thermal adds another barracks on top of that, so... Alright, then. Doubling down, man. Gotta make it work. Yeah. It's all or nothing on this last game. It's already not worked, though, and their best bet is to just surprise one of these guys with too many Reapers. Like, you, you'd you expect 10, but suddenly they, they may have 30 because they literally didn't stop building them. And you can take on a lot of units. 30 Reapers will take on most early game units, but not an Oracle. An Oracle gets to live. They could split the units up, then the Oracle can't chase all of them down, which is a potential thing. But unfortunately, any any give from Optimus means a laser gets to go across the map and fight. So you thought about him going to try and gang up on the Roaches? They could certainly take this fight with the Ravagers, but not when the Stalkers come in. Mm. They got to fight this 2v1. Speed is their greatest advantage right now through these Reapers. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't even mind, I suppose, if a laser went for a fast lair. Uh, going for a hatchery is a little scary, but, you know, Harshman's going for a nexus. Oh. I expect the laser to follow soon. He's got to run for the Oracle, but takes a pretty good fight against the Stalkers there. That was actually looking very promising. <laughs> um, grenade damage is so weak nowadays. Jesus. The roaches, like, heal up the grenade damage as they're mid-flight. <laughs> I was uh, worried that Oracle would get caught in a corrosive bile. <laughs> That would be the worst, <laughs> the worst team move of all time. <laughs> yeah, it would. Uh, but you know, Thermal, I guess, is the one that's kind of saying, like, look, I'll cover you while you get to better tech, and maybe we'll mm -hmm. catch them in surprise with the Metavax. But they are in danger of being pushed into their bases. They try and buy time with grenades, and it's kind of worked. But now he Thermal. Oh, no, this Optimus. Optimus is the one that did try expand, did try and tech, so he doesn't have as <laughs> many know. Reapers. I just realized when you compare it, a Ravager has to put a target down where the Crystal Bile is going to land. There's a short delay and then a very explosive amount of 60 damage done. A Reaper has to put a marker down where it's going to attack after a short delay and almost non existent explosive amount of damage is done. Like, well, gonna... the grenades also get crowd control. So. You're right. That's, that's the trade off. The... 0.2 seconds they're in the sky. Uh, I do like this. Staying at home, the fight would not work out well for them, so they try and trade this out on the other side of the field. Uh, but this is still, I think, a race they cannot win. is gonna pull into this. Tank's almost out, but the tank's gonna pop into Roaches. Ooh, he's trying to master Parrot, but it's gonna go down. Yep. Looks, Looks like, like Harsim and died. Laser are gonna be able to 2-0. Nice, we'll see those guys in the semi-finals of this tournament. Poor, poor gear and gore. <laughs> poor Terrans. Poor Oracles. What the fuck? What are that you doing, Hearts, though? That was a little wonky. But the Euthermal was not the one really transitioning. He has now. He has nothing but barracks production, however, and, and not close to Stim. So. He would still be overwhelmed with the Roaches and Ravagers come forward here. I like the effort and I like the hustle, but this map, man, this was a, a good attempt out of the Terran to abuse what they can, but just didn't work out. I hate this map, though. I play Terran, and I hate this map. It's my least favorite map on the Citadel. <laughs> oh, Mass Effect has such better memes. 
Anyone remember Dragon Age memes? No. No, I actually literally no. can't even think of one. I know there's definitely one, but I can't think of it either. There's definitely well, one. Thus concludes the group stages for the TV2 tournament. There's no random thing, unfortunately. There's no draw from a hat. This is just two teams from each of the groups seeding into one another. So the loser versus the winner, loser versus the winner. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. To, again, 2v2 content's a little bit different. And the best thing to do is constantly hear people tell us that they like it so that we're more encouraged to do it in the future. But we've got uh, three months of a lot of really intense 1v1 stuff coming up. Plenty of money on the line for that. That's the BTSL we'll be announcing fully and entirely soon. But uh, this is going to wrap things up. Like we said, it'll be the last time you guys see Zombie Grub on the channel for a little bit. Because she's going to choose Adelphia. Basically gone for the week. Uh, when are you casting next? What are you casting next with me? Uh, yeah, Lima League. League. Cool. So yeah, about a, about a week or so. Uh, I guess you want to tell people about what you're doing at Cheese and where they can do whatever tickets that they need or shit like that? I don't know. Awesome. All right. Well, guys, make sure to follow Zombie <laughs> over on Twitter at ZG Gaming. My bad. <laughs> she will... Well, luckily, you know, it's not your job to do that, right? That's the event. I did. Yes. If you follow me on Twitter at DG Gaming, I did retweet where you can sign up. It is an open bracket. Uh, I think you can also just, uh, just show up and, and play if you're around the area and you didn't realize that you could. And um, it is happening this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, I'll be back a little bit sooner than that, though, guys, because we'll be doing the BTSL light on Friday. Maynard's going to come join me for that. So it'll be bright and early at 4 a.m. Pacific. Uh, like we said, there's that new temporary sponsor, Luck Box. They're going to be putting 100 bucks or so into the prize pot. So we have 100 from us, 100 codes from Maturino, and 100 bucks from Luck Box. That's a $300 just once-off tournament. Boom, right there. So the best way to support that, too, is by going to the giveaway link. It's a Gleam link. It links to all their social media, their, their website, their Discord. Um, and basically, it, it's a weird promotion we're doing, though. But it, it, the more social media influence we can help them get, get them some Twitter followers, get them some Discord people, uh, the more money they'll be shelling out to do events with us. So right now, it's only 300 bucks, but it's going to easily become 600 It's not going to take that much. So do us a favor, exclamation mark giveaway in chat. Use that Gleam link, because on top of that, you can win a prize, but also help us fill out the needs to get some more awesome prize money. Otherwise, follow the channel. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have a vodcast right here in a little bit. We're going to end the stream with some ads and find somebody to raid. We got, of course, the new Ace Raid emote. It looks fantastic when used in spamming combination with Ace 1, Ace 2. So Ace 1, Ace 2, Ace 3 it up. And uh, we'll see you guys. Well, I'll see you on Friday, and we'll see Zombie up next week. Thanks again for watching, everybody. See ya.